Oh, I love falls coming for many reasons. I've been watching the birds flock together for the last few weeks, knowing the season's upon us. But I just like getting, kind of getting back into a routine uh, with, uh, you know, vacations are over and school started up again. And parents can breathe for a while till the kids are gone and Cindy and I'll be leaving uh, this afternoon to head to Michigan. Uh, so we're going to go see our grandkids out there, and I imagine their parents will be there too, but it's, not, it's about the grandkids. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it'll be a, a good time. Uh, we just welcome you here. If you're new to uh, Community Wesleyan Church, there's a card in the pews there if you want to grab one and make them out, put it in the, the basket on your way out. We'd just love to get to know you a little bit better and, and help, uh, help you know, encourage you to know our, our Heavenly Father. We've been talking about soul shifts, and um, today we're talking about shifting from a position of asking, and so often we ask God, to a position of listening. And I had the opportunity yesterday to officiate a wedding and uh, during the reception time, uh, the father of the bride got up and just said, you know, we, I welcome you here because everyone here uh, made an investment in the lives of the bride or the groom or both of them. And as I thought about that, yeah, how, uh, you know, we all invest in others. We all are invested in. Uh, sometimes, you know, as parents, we invest more and more in our children than than a coworker w- would, and vice versa. We've all got those um, people in our lives that we invest heavily in, and some that we invest a little bit in. Uh, uh, at, the, at the wedding, I invested in the bride and groom through premarital counseling and working to make sure that the ceremony went well, and you know they were married at the end of the day, made that all happen, investing in them. But you know, everybody has. We all invest in different ways. And as I thought about that, you know, as, as, as a church, we come and we invest in, in each other. And, and some of you invest in others more than, you know, we all invest in, in different degrees with those around us. And as I thought about that, I said, I mean, God wants to invest in our life. Huge. He wants to be number one in that investment. And, and it, it matters so greatly uh, how much we let him invest in us. Uh, because it matters so greatly to how we can wisely invest in those around us. And as we talk today about going from talking and asking God to just listening to God, it's amazing how easy, uh, and you'll probably agree with me, how easy when we pray, we too often just talk to God. This is my needs, this is what I need done, instead of just stopping and listening, getting uh, those other voices uh, away so that we just hear God's voice. And throughout this series we've been doing, I, I just remind you of the, briefly on the things that we've talked about because it's, it's not necessarily we, we work on one and get it done, and then we work on another and get it done, and work on another and get it done, but it's the Holy Spirit working in us and through us in life where he's working in all these areas. Some may be more evident um, than others, but it's a whole process of being re, uh, made new in God's likeness. So the first week was about going from me to you and where we, we see other people in a different light. We see other people in, in, in God's view where it's not always focused on us. And the second week, we talked about uh, going from a slave to a child as we put our trust in God and trust in Jesus that we're adopted into the family and we start doing things uh, naturally that God does because we, we are being made new in him. We stop doing things the old way and we understand how the Father acts, and, and we follow that example. Then we talked about um, going from the seen world to the unseen world, uh, where we have the shift in values because we know that this isn't the only world out there. There's this unseen world where the kingdom of God is, and Jesus is coming back, and, and you know heaven is there, and, and we give up things, sacrifice things in, at this time in our life because we, we know the eternal is much greater than uh, the temporary. 
But we know people live in the temporary and they are the greatest, most important things in our lives because we want them to be in the, the eternal with us, with God. And then last week we talked about going from a consumer to a steward, uh, uh, going from taking in or keeping and, and collecting everything that God has given to us, whether it's financially or gifts, uh, whatever, to understanding that God owns it all. It, and he's given it to you and to me uh, to use for his, his benefit, his glory. And when we can just get our hands off and say, Lord, uh, how can I use what you've give, given me f- for your glory? It just frees you up in so many ways to understand and, and love God and, in new ways and love those around us. And today we're going to talk about going from asking to, to listening, that we listen and learn to listen well. Um, because, face it, we're all spiritually deaf. When we start out, you know, as sinners, we are spiritually deaf, and it's only by the grace of God that, that we can hear anything from God. His grace and His mercy pour out. And it's very difficult to hear, hear that voice, the voice that we need to hear, God, when we're spiritually deaf. But God, uh, God's amazing grace just pours out on us. It's hard to hear a voice that is un- inaudible, right? And yet God is there, and we know he is there. As Christians, we know. We've, we know the truth. We know he's there. Max Lucado said, the one who spoke still speaks. And you know that. Maybe a lot of you hear his voice often. And the more you walk with him and have that relationship with him, you understand his voice. Uh, and Jesus said, the, uh, I am the shepherd and the, you are the sheep, and the sheep know the voice of the shepherd. So as we walk with God and talk with God and listen to God more and more, we know when he speaks. So scripture comes out of John. We're going to start in John 13. And as we're going down through these scriptures today, um, Jesus is basically telling his disciples he's leaving. It's time for me to go. And we just see the interaction of the disciples have with Jesus in their thoughts and so much like we would have today. John 13, 21 says these words. Now Jesus was deeply troubled and he exclaimed, I tell you the truth. He was talking to his disciples. I tell you the truth. One of you will betray me. Put yourself in this picture. Put yourself in that last supper. You're sitting down. You're one of the disciples. Jesus gets up and says, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. And the disciples are looking around wondering, what's he talking about? What could he mean? And the disciple Jesus loved, John, was sitting next to Jesus at the table. And Simon Peter's motion over there, hey, John, ask Jesus, what's he talking about? You know, you can just picture this. Ask him, "What's, what's he talking about? What's he talking about? So the disciple in verse 25, John leaned over to Jesus and says, Lord, who is it? And Jesus responded, it is the one whom I give the bread, I dip in the bowl. And when he has dipped it, he gave it to Judas, son of Simon Iscariot. When Judas had eaten the bread, Satan entered in him and Jesus told him, hurry, hurry now, go do what you're going to do. But none of the others at the table knew what Jesus meant. They're still confused. They're wondering what's going on here. So Judas was the treasurer. Since Judas was the treasurer, some thought Jesus was telling him to go and pay for the food or give him some money to give the poor. So Judas, he got up and he left and went out in the night. And as soon as Judas left the room, Jesus said, the time for the Son of Man to enter his glory, and it is time for the Son of Man to enter his glory, and God will be glorified because of him. And since God received Glory because of the Son, he will soon give glory to the Son. And somewhere in the commotion of all that's going on and wondering what Jesus is talking about, and Judas getting up and leaving, and, and Peter trying to get attention of John, all the commotion of this, this, this dinner. We've been in those dinners, right? You know, family dinners, Thanksgiving, Christmas, right? Everybody's talking and all, all going on and uh, not sure what's the commotion of it all, but somewhere in the commotion of, uh, of all this, Jesus' words were lost, like, I'm leaving. 
They were just lost. They, maybe they weren't heard. Maybe they were heard. They just, they just got lost in it all. And a few verses later, in John 13, through 35, Jesus says, Dear children, I will be with you only a little longer. And as I told the Jewish leaders, you will search for me, but you can't go where I'm going. Imagine being a disciple and hearing these words. And Jesus says, so now I'm giving you a new commandment. Love each other just as I have loved you. You should love each other. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my disciples. I think Jesus is just saying to them, you know, this, this, is, this is more of an invitation than a command. He's saying, okay, I, I give you a new invitation to, to love the world, to prove to the world that you are my disciples. Here's an opportunity for you to go out and, and show the world Jesus. Show them real love. And they're still just kind of, ah, I'm not sure what's going on here. Still in a daze and, okay, what's going on? Everything was going good. You know, and, and Peter, he wasn't in the mood for a new lesson. You ever been in the mood for a, <laughs> I don't want to listen to this, right? That's Peter. I don't want to hear what you're saying, Jesus. No, I don't, I don't like this. And, and often we're not in, in that mood either. In John 13, 36 through 38, Simon Peter says these words, Lord, where are you going? Where are you going? And Jesus replied, Peter, you, you can't go with me now, but you'll, you'll come later. But why can't I come? Sounds like a kid, right? I want to go, because I said so. <laughs> why can't I come, Lord? He said, I'm ready to die for you. Right? There's Peter. You know, he doesn't want to hear this. And Jesus answered, die for me. <laughs> Peter, before the rooster crows tomorrow morning, you'll deny me th three times. You'll deny you even know me. So often we don't have a clue <laughs> what's going on, right? We don't like surprises in our lives. We like the good surprises. We don't like the bad surprises. And God is full of surprises, and many of them we just don't understand. This VBS, I got to tell the story of Joseph. Man, was that family full of surprises, right? Joseph's the favorite. Surprise! Uh, maybe good, maybe bad, I don't know. Joseph got a coat of many colors. Look at me. That, I'm not sure that was a good surprise. Good, good surprise for Joseph. And Joseph's a little bit surprised when his uh, brothers say, hey, guess what, Joseph? We're selling you as a slave. He's like, oh, bad, bad surprise there. And he goes off to Egypt, and he's what am I doing here? And he gets sold again into the house of Potiphar, and he works his way up so he's in command of the house. You know, oh, that's pretty good, pretty neat. Next thing you know, he gets, uh, uh, somebody says he did something he didn't do, and he's in prison. Surprise! You like these kind of surprises? I'm not sure Joseph did. And then for long, he's in charge of the prison, and then he thinks he's getting out, and he's got to wait another couple of years, and finally, surprise, he gets out and works his way up, and he's second in command, uh, of command in the nation of Israel. Surprise, surprise, surprise. And God had taken all these surprises, that, uh, good surprises, and some that we thought were bad surprises, and he used those so that Joseph could save a nation. And then a few thousand years later, got all these surprises, Jesus coming, everything's going good, and all of a sudden Jesus says, I'm leaving. You can't go with me, you come later. Surprise. But God was rising up Jesus, the Son of God, to save the world. And nobody saw it coming, and we wouldn't have seen it coming either. And Peter's confused, and the disciples are confused, and So when those surprises come in your life, some that you think, wow, I didn't like that. <laughs> Not so sure about that. Remember, God can take that and use it for our good and his glory. 
chapter later in John and John 14, 16 through 17, Jesus says these words, and I will ask the Father and he will give you an advocate, the Holy Spirit, who will never leave you. He will never leave you. He is the Holy Spirit who leads in all truth. The world can't receive him because it isn't looking for him and doesn't recognize him, but you know him because he lives in you and, and, or lives with you and later he will be in you. And they still don't get it as we wouldn't get it. In their minds, I can just imagine the disciples asking, Jesus, why do you got to go? Aren't things going good here? It just seems like if you just stayed and kept doing what you're doing, that things could only get better. But now you're telling us you're leaving, then you're going to send an advocate, and uh, I, I don't know what's going on. They, see, they couldn't see beyond uh, what they could only understand or what they thought was best. They didn't see the plan that God's got for them and for the world. And so often we don't see that and we don't understand. And that's some of that transformation where we've got to stop asking and just listening to God say, okay. Okay. In John 16, a couple chapters later, Jesus says, instead you grieve because of what I've told you. Grieve that he was leaving. But in fact, it's best that I go away. Jesus bluntly told the disciples, it's best that I go away because if I don't, the advocate won't come. If I do go away, I'll send him. They, they didn't know that how much better it would be. They didn't know that Jesus was going to the cross so the forgiveness for all of our sins. They didn't know that was wrapped in there too. And then he would rise again because death could not hold him and the Holy Spirit would be given to those who have their faith in Jesus Christ. They, they didn't see that coming either. That's another big surprise. God is full of surprises. We too, you know, we don't understand. Uh, we don't like change because it's going good. Everything's smooth sailing. Let's just keep it the way it is. It, it, why change when I don't think that's going to work out? I, I just don't see how that happening. It just doesn't make sense. Sometimes we even tell God to stop, <laughs> right? God, don't do it this way. Don't do it this way. Come here, I'll, I'll show you how it needs to be done. We've all done that, right? The secret, or one of the secrets, is to learn to hear the voice of God in us among all the other voices in our heads. And the world has their voice. Our friends have their voice. Family have their voice. And we long to hear the voice of God. How do we do that? God wants us to know his thoughts. Uh, he wants us to naturally be transformed, to be made new so that we know exactly uh, what he wants us to do and when to do it. Um, and a spiritual shift happens in our life when we go from just asking to just listening our motivation changes. There's a peace that comes with that. We still ask for advice from others. That's important. But we need to listen to the voice of God first and foremost. Because prayer isn't just about speaking. It's just about as much about listening as it is talking. And so often we get it the other way in, in my life too. Now many of us as we get older, um, physically we have a harder time hearing. Uh, and as I talk to people, we, they intentionally do things uh, so that they can hear better. And that might be getting some hearing aid of some sort, right? It also might be sitting in the right spot, sitting in the right side, if one ear is better than the other, intentionally um, doing whatever we can to hear. And we, how can we be intentional about hearing God speak in our lives? What are some things we can do that we need to, need to do to be intentional? And first is just read. 
Read, but don't just read to read. Read to listen and take time and just, okay, speak to me. Psalm 46.10, be still and know that I am God. Right? Just be still. In prayer time, I just, you know, I, I take my phone and set up for five minutes or ten minutes, and I just try to be quiet, which is hard to do because I got my own voices in my head. Right? It's just me that mess things up. But just try to get them out and just listen to the Lord. And it's amazing how quickly those five or ten minutes uh, go by, and then I can just speak to the Lord too. We have this interaction. Um, stop trying to make God speak our language for our time or our agenda. So often we just say, Lord, you need to do this, and then we're stuck in that. But take time to listen to what God says. And as we, as we start this shift, there's things in our life that'll change. It'll change from what does God want me to do to what does God want me to become? Which is totally different. First is, okay, Lord, what do you want me to do? Let's go do it. To the listening to God and said, okay, what do you want me to become? And God will show you what he wants you to do, but he'd much rather you become first. And sometimes doing helps us to become that. Um, sometimes we want to make decisions so that we'd be more successful before the shift. But after the shift, we want to become more Christ-like. Lord, how can I be more like you? How can you transform me? But I tell you, if you know Christ and become more Christ-like, you'll be more successful. That doesn't mean financially. That doesn't mean the world's ways of being successful. But boy, being Christ-like and understanding what Christ has done for you will bring you blessings and prosperity and peace and goodness and kindness and the fruit of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. I think I forgot one. But you understand. And we look for ways for God to work in and through us. We are full of interruptions in our life. This thing interrupts our life more than most things, along with the television, along with the uh, conversations we have or distractions of the world. And the key is not to get God to speak up and yell over them, but to get the world to shut up. Get the world to shut up. And you will hear God's small, still voice. I personally need, uh, I need it silent when I'm doing it. I, I, don't, I can't have music on, even if it's good music, even if it's the Gaithers casting crowns. Okay, I got to have silence. Uh, maybe that's not you. Uh, God works in all of us in different areas. But how do, you, how do you get the world to shut up so we can hear God's voice and know that it's God's voice. And, and first of all, it'll be consistent with his word and his character when he speaks to you. God is not going to say something to you that goes against who his nature is or who his character is. Um, and often it's, it, when God speaks, he speaks in a way that uh, in how you were created. Now, I usually take time. If I don't take time to make a decision, I usually make uh, a wrong decision. So I try to take time in decisions as best I can. So God will plant me a seed way over here, right? He'll start working on me way over here because he knows the right time, I'll make the right decision, listen to his voice, but it's going to be over here before it happens, right? Now God might work through an engineer <laughs> differently than he would an artist because they see things differently. Right? It's, it's how he creates you, but, but it never strays from his character. It never strays from his word. And yet, in all of those things, I find it so cool that God will sometimes just work on impulse. I don't know how many times God has just spoken to me and said, call somebody, text somebody, get a hold of somebody. And I've heard back that it was the most perfect timing for all those or whatever, whatever I did, right? But it's understanding that you've heard God's voice. Now, I got to get a hold of this person. 
I may not have thought about them in, in two or three weeks or a month, and oh, I got to go get a hold of them, and I'll, I'll just text them and, um, or call them, and, and it's like God's perfect timing. So in all of it, when it comes to listening, we just got to hear his voice. We've got to learn to hear his voice. As the team comes up to get ready to close, and we hear his voice when we listen more, when we expect to hear his voice, through prayer, through the word, we hear his voice when we give ourselves more opportunities to hear his voice. And sometimes that's, uh, you know, I challenge all of you to be in a, in a Sunday school or a small group or throughout the week. Find yourself opportunities where God can sometimes speak into other people's life, into you, and then you've got to go, okay, hey, okay Lord, let's, let's talk about this. But the, no, the more we know God, the more we grow in God, the more we can hear his voice and we know it and no matter what anybody else says you can stand i I know what god told me to do i don't may not understand it um it's kind of a surprise right but it's but it's you, you just know that you know and ultimately it comes you know it comes back to loving people loving others and showing showing god to those around us so I challenge you this week, spend time alone and in silence with God. And Kelly's back there saying, (laughs) you should see our household. (laughs) Right? It's hard sometimes. It's hard when you got kids and, you know, and and, uh, yeah. Being a Christian's not easy. But boy, the Benefits of knowing Christ are so abundant in the peace that comes with that in so many other ways.